the silly question that's been said many, many times is, do you believe in fairies? But of course, if we go back a long time in, in history, people did believe in fairies. They felt that there was a, another type of life out there. And I have always been familiar with a very famous group of fairy photographs taken in the 19, in 1920 uh -huh. um, called the Cottingley Fairies. And when I saw that you brought these in, I was fascinated because anybody who's interested in you know, the history of our times knows these images. I've seen that picture reproduced so many times. I've seen that one reproduced. You know, each one I look at and I think, gosh, you know, yes, I know these. They're extraordinary visions of how we believed in fairies at a certain time. But how do you have these? The girl that took the last... She took one of the first series of photographs in 1917 of my mother. And she took so hang two. on a minute. So your mother was what? Frances, Frances Griffiths. Griffiths. Yes. So these, the story is that these two children, one age 16, one age 10, believed there were fairies in the bottom of their garden. And in order to convince their father, they took a camera and they took photographs. That's right. And that was in July and August 1917. And those two photographs, as I understand it, were those two. Is that right? That's right, yes. So, which is your mother? This is my mother here. That's your mother. So, Elsie was what? Her cousin? Or her first cousin, yes. Her mother, their mothers were sisters. Okay, so they came back with the camera and said, we can prove there are fairies. And these were accepted at the time, weren't they? So, when the first photographs were taken in 1917, they were really only shown to the family, weren't they? They were only intended for family consumption, yeah. just to get Francis out of trouble, because he was always falling in the back and getting wet. Yeah, so it was about saying, there really are fairies that have delayed me in my walks in the garden. But then they were included in lectures, in the Theosophical Societies, they began to be published, Conan Doyle became involved. And by 1920, it had become a big story, hadn't it? Um, the world had actually woken up to the fact that there were fairies, and more important, there were fairy photographs. And is that why P. Conan Doyle gave the girls a camera? Yes, that's right. He heard from Edward Gardner, who's in the Theosophical Society, Society about yeah. the photographs, about the first two photographs. Yes. And then Sir Arthur Conan Doyle gave one camera to Elsie and one camera to Francis. And sent them off to do it again, in effect. Yes, with lots of plates. Actually, we thought that was missing until about ten years ago. We we thought being thrown out, and my grandmother had thrown it out. And I was going through the safe about ten years ago, and I found an old brown envelope. And I looked inside the envelope, and I saw that, and I brought the camera to my mum and asked, was that Granny's so, camera? So, so it, it survived, but it's pure chance. It is, really, yeah. It was obviously meant to be. And did the photographs reappear at the same time? Well, just the last couple of years, we discovered that. In fact, two we only discovered two days ago before the Antiques Roadshow. Really? Yes, because we were looking for stuff to I mean, bring here. Because these are the most important pieces. Yeah, yeah. yeah Because right. these have come directly from that camera. Yes. Today, looking at these, it's very hard to believe why anybody believed it. You grew up with your mother, Frances. Did she ever talk about it? No. She was very ashamed of it. She was ashamed of the deception. So, they, through her life, she knew this had happened, but she said nothing. Until no. the 1980s. The 1980s, yes. She discovered then that Elsie had told her son when they lived in India that they were that she had fake photographs. Right. And so when I told my mother that, when I told Frances that, then that she felt then free then to be able to talk about it. So did you grow up knowing the story? I did, yes. And I believe that the, the photographs were real at that stage. Until it was revealed until, until she actually said yes, in the early they weren't 80s, real. Yes. Okay. But she never spoke to me about no. it. I think we've got to look at why people believed. Because in those days, the camera couldn't lie. The camera was a scientific instrument. And so if you produced a photograph of a fairy, it had to be right. Because yes. it was a photograph. We are now much more cynical. We expect to be deceived. Our minds are open to the possibilities of deceit. And so things have changed completely. And by the 1980s, when she was talking about it, the world was ready to accept that this was a fake. Whereas until that point, many people had still believed that because it was a photograph, it had to be real. And this was in a place called Cottingley in Yorkshire, wasn't it, in Bradford? Yes, just outside Bradford. Yeah. Is that it? That's, that photograph was taken about five years ago by myself. You took that? Yes. So did you go to look for fairies in the dell? I did. 
Did you see any? No. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> so you tried hard to repeat the, repeat the experiment. I mean, it shows, it looks actually a perfect place for fairies, doesn't it? It does, it's very peaceful, it's lovely. What the photographs actually were doesn't really matter. What do you think? Were they cutouts or...? Those were cutouts, yes, yes. this wasn't. This last one. That, that Francis one. Francis said that's genuine. So, to her death, she said that was a genuine She photograph. said genuine, because what happened was Elsie um, cut out the others and they put hat pins in them, they stuck them in grasses and on trees. In 1920, with a current on canvas, they took two more, which Elsie had prepared. Yes. But then it took so such a short time to take the photographs that Aunt Polly said, you have to go and try and get some more because these men have gone to a lot of expense and trouble. So they had to go back again. So they did go in the glen. They went above the glen, the field above the glen yeah. where there's a reservoir. And they're sitting there talking. And then my mother saw, this was three years later, my mother saw, um, she saw uh, things beginning to appear in the grass, like misty, misty objects. And without thinking, she had the camera on her knee, Without thinking, she took out the camera, that one there, yes. and she pulled out the lens and judged it to be three feet away, and she snapped it. And when that negative went back to London, they couldn't see what was on it, but they strengthened the images. And from, the, from that negative, they're able to bring out five yes. fairy right. figures. So and she said that's genuine. So to her death, she said, this is a real it's fairy figure. It's genuine, yes, genuine. What do you think? Do you think it is? I do, yes. And you do? Yes. Well, I'm not going to argue. So we might be looking at the only known photograph of real fairies. Yes. The others are a fake. This is the real thing. And they're so now, different. They're so different. Those are solid images. These yes. you can actually see through. You can them. see the difference. You see the ga yeah. glasses behind and yeah. in front. And those are harebells. They're so tiny, you know. So those and the camera are the absolute original yes. material. Yes. I think it's. I'm just holding this camera. <laughs> you know. Now, what we've got here is something that is extremely rare. I mean, this is a camera is worth. 20 or 30 pounds in pure camera time. It's nothing. It's nothing special at all. Uh -huh. Add that story, this is all going to be 25, 30,000 pounds. Who knows? Out there, there are fanatical collectors. It's not the camera, it's the images. These are the key. And it's just extraordinary, as I say, to be in touch with this magic moment. Actually, I'm beginning to believe it myself. <laughs> and I started by saying, do I believe in fairies? Perhaps I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.